Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to something a little bit different. As you know, if you listen to the Needless Things podcast or if you follow NeedlessThingsPodcast.com, uh, I am a huge fan of the Major Wrestling Figure podcast hosted by Brian Myers and Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder of the WWE. Now, this uh, minicast has nothing to do with wrestling, but it is a figure unboxing, which is something I have never done as an audio podcast before, but it's something that those guys do as part of their Patreon, uh, which I'm part of. It's the best Patreon ever. It is worth every penny, and uh, I'm very impressed with what those guys do there. Uh, so what I am doing here today is an unboxing of a figure that I have never reviewed on Needless Things before, or, or rather a type of figure I have never reviewed on Needless Things before. Now, I do own one of these figures already and have bought several of them, but this is going to be the first uh, sort of unboxing and audio review that I do because let me just tell you, Fortnite is not in my wheelhouse my son has been absolutely obsessed with Fortnite for the past year or so. And we bought the McFarlane figures. We bought these three and three quarter inch Jazzwares figures. Uh, he has played the heck out of that game. It's been insanity. And what's funny is he's sort of started to cool on the game now, which is a shame because Jazzwares has just started releasing these six inch action figures that are some of the best figures I have ever seen in my life. Uh, I have bought him all of them that have come out. Series or uh, was it Series One? Series One consists of the Visitor, Skull Trooper, Wild Card, Rabbit Raider, Enforcer, and Havoc, which is the figure I will be talking about in this mini cast. Now, uh, the Visitor I bought for myself when I bought my son Skull Trooper, Rabbit Raider, and Enforcer because he just looked so cool I wanted to review him. Uh, Jazzwares does not have the best reputation in the world, as far as I'm concerned, for quality of figures. But these just, I, I found them in, in, look, I hate Walmart. I hate it. I hate it. But there's no way around the fact that sometimes you just have to go to Walmart, especially if you're looking for the Walmart-exclusive Star Wars The Vintage Collection Escape from Jabba's Palace playset, which apparently is just never going to ship to Walmart. I hate Walmart. Uh, but you got to go in there. And I went in there, and uh, Phantom Jr. and Mrs. Troublemaker were in the car, and I saw these brand-new Fortnite figures in gorgeous packaging that I had never seen before. Uh, they And they just looked incredible. They come with tons of accessories. The sculpts are great. They have multiple heads. Uh, just really, really strong, strong initial presentation for action figures. I, I was really, really impressed. And I'll be honest, I was buying that first set, uh, or those first few, for my son, but I was also kind of stoked to be buying them because they just looked like awesome toys. So I got those for him. Uh, he opened we we opened them up. I opened up the visitor. I took a bunch of pictures. My intent was for us both to review the visitor, and it just hasn't happened yet uh, because I, honestly, I've had uh, plenty of content since I bought that figure, and uh, I just haven't really had the time to devote to a review of a brand new excellent action figure. Uh, so that leads me to today's subject. Uh, once again, I was in Walmart because I needed things that you can only get at Walmart, and I happened across more Fortnite figures. Uh, they had the two figures that are part of Series 1 that I didn't see before, and that is Wildcard and Havoc. Now, Wildcard is... 
a guy in a white suit, or I guess a series of guys in white suits, and they're different masks that represent the different uh, suits of a card deck. Uh, I wasn't, I mean, it looked great. I wasn't that interested in that one. Uh, but they uh, they had two of Havoc. And the reason that I bought, and I bought Wild Card and Havoc for, for Phantom Jr., but I also bought a Havoc for myself. And the reason that I did, and if you need to, you can either visit our Instagram to see a picture. Uh, go to Needless Things Podcast on Instagram. You can see a picture of Havoc. And... Uh, I will tell you that my favorite G.I. Joe character is Firefly. And that Havoc is Firefly. There's no way around it. This is 100% a Firefly action figure uh, from his uh, urban camo, from his black and gray urban camo to his olive green uh, semi-automatic weapon to his backpack with pockets and bombs on it. I mean, this couldn't be... The only way this could be more Firefly is if Hasbro had released it and it was literally a 6-inch G.I. Joe Legends, I don't know what they would call it, Firefly. Which, my gosh, someday I hope that happens. Uh, so right now I'm sitting here looking at Havoc, who is basically Firefly. Now, the packaging on these new Jazzwares 6-inch Fortnite figures is gorgeous. It is some of the best packaging I've seen in years. It is a window box style package, but the window itself extends around uh, three sides of the packaging. It's a nice, clear, firm plastic. It looks very, very classy. And then around that, there's a white uh, sort of grid pattern with different... Uh, the the lines in the white grid are glossy. Uh, this is just every every possible uh, bit of expense went into this packaging. No expense was spared would be a better way to say it. I mean, it just looks incredible. It's got a picture of the character on the bottom right corner, uh, it, and it says his name right in the middle. But th this is just beautiful packaging. I love it when you have raised textures, different glosses. Uh, you've got a, on the back, you have a uh, glossy picture of the character on a matte background. Uh, and it says, Havoc, striking fear into the opposition. Uh, includes one figure, six inches, and seven accessories. Seven accessories. Like, that's... That's wild, and this is this is a figure that's competing with Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series. This is a twenty dollar action figure, and it looks uh, it looks premium to me. It wouldn't have surprised me that first time that I bought uh, some of these. It wouldn't have surprised me if they'd been twenty four ninety nine. I'm not even kidding. So uh, you've got it on the back. You have not only the picture of the the in game character. Uh, but at the bottom, it shows the rest of the figures from Series 1, uh, which Hasbro could learn a lesson from that. And then a little square at the end says, More dropping in soon. Now, if you know anything about Fortnite, and I know just a little bit about Fortnite, you know that when you go in to play a game, your characters drop in from uh, Battle Bus, I think it's called. And they all have like hang gliders or, or balloons or whatever that they drop into the zone where they fight or, or build things or whatever it is they're doing. Uh, so they do drop into the, the battle zone, and it says more dropping in soon. It's great. Uh, you've got the little Jazzwares logo. All of the Jazzwares social media stuff is on here. Uh, th this is really expertly designed packaging, and I'm very impressed with it. So... That being said, you know how we do at Needless Things. You know how I do. I got to, and, and look, I got to give Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins or, uh, credit for this one. Let them breathe. The, this is what I have always done, but I've never had a phrase for it. Uh, I am not a men on card collector. I open everything up. And uh, those guys, their term for it is let them breathe. So right now, I'm going to grab my official Needless Things podcast box cutter, and I'm going to slice into the tape that is holding this figure, uh, holding this box shut on this figure. Hopefully this flap will be pretty easy to open. I don't remember exactly how this thing opened up before. So you've got flaps on the side, a couple of tabs, and there it goes. It opens right up. Slide out that plastic tray. 
Let's throw the box over there. And uh, let's pull out all of these accessories first. You've got... Now, it's not... I, I had said different heads. Uh, these figures don't actually come with different heads. They come with face plates that you switch out uh, on top. Let's give them a little sniff here. Oh, yeah, that's some good new toy smell. Mmm. Excellent new toy smell. All right, so there's all the accessories out. And now let's pop Havoc out of the plastic tray. Nice, sturdy plastic tray. Uh, keeps everything secured. Look, no twist ties. Everything is just in there with little pressure tabs to hold it in place. No twist ties at all. Everything's secure. Everything's separate. And let's throw that tray to the side. And uh, let's pull this pickaxe out of his hands. And we will take a look at first at the accessories that come with Havoc from Fortnite. So the pickaxe is critical. Uh, I don't totally understand what the deal is with the pickaxe in Fortnite, but as far as this figure goes, uh, he has it's got a great paint job on it. The plastic it's made of is sort of a metallic gunmetal plastic, but there's red detailing on the pickaxe head, uh, on a little piston, and on at the bottom there's a smaller pick that uh it's it's all a metallic looking red and then on top of that metallic red is a wash of silver to give it a look of like some wear uh and this this is a this isn't necessarily rigid plastic but it's not floppy rubber like a lot of the marvel legends have so it's pretty good and uh this the figure can hold it very nicely he's got hinges on his uh, knuckles, on his top knuckles, so that you can pose his hands. More on that in a minute. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of that, but right now you can put that pickaxe in those hands and he holds it really well and it looks really good. And uh, he can, yeah, he can hold it one-handed too, which was a problem that I had with the visitor, is that his the hinges in his hands were a little loose and he had trouble holding stuff. So before we get to Havoc, let's take a look at the rest of his, his accessories. Uh, as I mentioned, he's got a backpack uh, that is... It, it's very reminiscent of Fireflies. As a matter of fact, so it's got the, the pockets on it, like Fireflies does, and it's the urban camo. But then there's a big cartoony bomb on top, a little cartoony bomb on the side. Uh, they've got some nice silver and metallic red paint on them. The big bomb on the top has a grinning mouth and some beady little eyes, so it looks like a sort of a stereotypical old uh, cartoon bomb. And the uh, straps holding it in are a glossy black. They, re uh, they look really great. And then behind that, there is actually a little handlebar type thing that's exactly like Firefly's old backpack. If you remember the Firefly toy from when you were a kid, the top of his backpack featured a, a sort of handlebar brace type thing that was unique to him in the G.I. Joe line. And Havoc has the same thing on his backpack. It's basically the, the same backpack with the addition of a couple of cartoony-looking bombs. Uh, it's really nice, and it plugs right into the hole in his back. Again, sort of G.I. Joe style. Just just the, the peg goes right into that hole, stays securely in place, and it looks really good. Uh, because the figure, again, much like G.I. Joe, has sculpted backpack straps uh, already on him so it looks like this thing is attached to those it's a really good look i like it uh good job on that jazz wares so nice backpack going on he's got a blue thing that i have no idea what it is if phantom jr was sitting here with me uh he could tell you it's some kind of blue canister but it's got a slot in one side that i only know this because of having one of these figures already his fingers fit into that slot so the figure can hold this canister, whatever it is. It's it's a probably a bomb or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's a cool-looking little canister. And here we go. The fingers fit right into that slot, 
and he can hold this thing and it's got a nice paint job it's got three different colors of blue there's a metallic blue there's some ridges uh, it almost looks like this might be a light of some sort i'm not sure but uh it's a cool little piece and unfortunately there's nowhere to store it on the figure but that seems to be kind of the case with these guys uh he also comes with what looks to be a grenade of some sort uh, it's green. It's got a little grenade tab on it. It's got uh, silver uh, detailing. Uh, it's cool, and it is small enough that the figure can hold it without any kind of slot or, or anything like that. So cool little grenade, extra accessory. And now we get to another sort of Firefly tribute piece, and that is this uh, olive green submachine gun that he comes with now here is the problem that i've got with these fortnite figures because of the hinges on their hands they can't really hold their weapons very well uh and i'm trying right now to get havoc to hold this submachine gun and it's not working out very well and that's pretty disappointing uh because these guys should be able to hold their guns and the only thing he can really do is you can kind of give him a two-handed gun stance where one hand is kind of on the the grip and then another hand is holding the barrel. Uh, it looks fine if you're just going to pose the figure that way, but as far as being an active gun stance, it's not great. Uh, I Honestly, these hinged knuckles are unnecessary. These could be normal open grip action figure hands and i think they'd be much better uh, but the gun itself looks fantastic it is reminiscent of firefly's submachine gun it's olive green uh, it has some nice uh, gunmetal gray detailing as well as some wear uh, some washes of uh, silver gunmetal gray painted on to give it a worn look it's really nice and now our final accessories are these face plates that you can use to create different portraits on Havoc's head. His default portrait is basically the Firefly face. You've got uh, he, he's wearing a ski mask that the texture on it is nice. It looks it looks like a balaclava um, against the rest of the figure, which is wearing normal fatigues, and it's easy enough to take this face plate off. All you do is grab the figure's head under the chin and pull, and the faceplate pops right off. Uh, the second faceplate that's included uh, has the same balaclava on it, uh, but he's got a surprised look. His eyebrows are raised up, and his eyes are slightly wider. Uh, it's kind of goofy looking, but I like it. I like having a little variation in how the, the figure's expression looks. Uh, it's very nice, very nice. It's a good mechanism for switching the face out, too. And then the final accessory, the last faceplate, uh, just pop this right on here, and the balaclava is actually pulled up over the forehead, and you have a complete revealed face, and it's the most generic brown-haired white guy face you've ever seen in your life. But my assumption is at some point in the game he looks like this, uh, so it's cool. It's great. I, I love that they they figured out this neat mechanism to have these different faces on this character. But I'll tell you right now, uh, the default Firefly face is the one that I'm going to go with. So let's let's wrap this up and move on to the figure itself. Uh, it is a six inch scale figure, and this is. Uh, marvel legends mcu six inch scale which means it's on the smaller end of six inch scale let me grab my handy dandy measuring tape right here i'll tell you exactly how tall this guy is he is exactly six inches tall so that is true i believe that is true one twelfth scale uh i just knocked over gung-ho there uh, speaking of G.I. Joe, that's true one twelfth scale, meaning uh, you have one inch per foot. So f let's assume Havoc is six feet tall. He, this figure is six inches tall, so this is true one twelfth scale, which is my preference. I don't like it uh, when things are a little oversized. 
Uh, so he's got these glossy combat boots that have really thick, deep treads on them that look really good. He has hinged toes, which is absolutely unnecessary. I, I don't understand it. Uh, he's got nice hinged ankles, does not have the sort of rocker-type pivot that a lot of figures now have been having, but that's okay. Uh, he's got swivels at his boot tops. He's got double-jointed knees with some nice glossy black knee pads that actually have eyelets on top of them, too. Uh, swivels at the top of the thigh, hinge swivels at the hips. Uh, very, very much a G.I. Joe-style looking uh, functionality-wise, hip joint. Uh, now, the, the it's actually a plastic hinge and swivel. It's not the it's not the O ring with the with the uh, coat hanger type deal in it. But uh, it's still, it looks really neat. It's got a waist swivel, and he's got an abdominal swivel, uh, a curved piece at the mid abdomen allows a lot of movement right here like this abdominal i guess you call it an abdominal rocker i think that's what people like to call this uh lots of range backwards forwards and side to side i'm really impressed with this joint uh we go up to the hinged swivel shoulders with uh swivel biceps double jointed elbows swivels at the wrist and hinges at the wrist same on uh, both arms, obviously. And then on the head, we've got a hinge and a ball joint. Uh, I mean, really, this is a phenomenal action figure, you guys. Uh, I, I am blown away by what Jazz... And on top of that, it's sturdy. It feels sturdy. This is... The plastic is more rigid than any Marvel Legends I own. It feels like a very high-quality toy. Uh, the detailing is great. His his painted-on camouflage looks amazing. Uh, his All the straps on the figure... And, and actually, I'm looking at this now, and the strap... There's a strap across his chest that has some uh, either shotgun shells or grenades or whatever on it. Shotgun shells. It's actually a separate piece, and it looks all the better for it. Uh, the backpack straps are glossy black with silver uh, clasps on them, glossy black gloves. Uh, th this is just an absolutely fantastic action figure, totally worth your $20. And i got to tell you this right now. If you happen to be in a store and you see these... Now, this is not the McFarlane Fortnite figures. This is Jazzwares. If you happen to see these Jazzwares Fortnite figures at a store, I highly recommend you take a look at them, find a character that you think looks cool or that you like, and if you're a toy fan, you owe it to yourself to grab one of these, take it home, open it up, and just play around with it. I mean, this... This is a fantastic action figure line to the point where if Jazzwares announced tomorrow that they had the license for DC Comics or um, really anything that I'm a fan of, I would be happy. I would be thrilled because these Fortnite figures are incredible. If I was still rating toys, these guys would get a 5 out of 5. Uh, this is this is a wonderful toy, wonderful action figure, and as good as Hasbro has been doing with uh, Star Wars Black Series and with a lot of their Marvel Legends, as great as Mattel's WWE Elite line is, I would say both of them could learn something from what Jazzwares is doing with these Fortnite figures. You guys, thank you for listening to this special, different episode of the Needless Things minicast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you go on iTunes and rate us. I hope you share this. And if you enjoyed it, please join the Needless Things podcast Facebook group and let me know that you would like to hear more action figure unboxing episodes of the Needless Things minicast. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you for listening to the Needless Things podcast. You're the best. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Downcast, or in the ears of a Trader Vix employee. Love you. Mean it. Uh-huh.